Hogan's versus Leo Stain, Druszynski, Myers, and Joyce agree. Uh, planning zoning and PAC boards. <coughs> the following, if I can get a motion for the following. Planning board chairperson appointment. That Pat Bishop be is appointed to the planning board chairperson in summary annual salary of $2,000 for a term to expire 12-31-12. Zoning board chair appointment that Victor Benson be appointed DBA chair at a semi salary salary of twelve hundred dollars for a term to expire on twelve thirty one. PAC chair that Carl Barda be appointed as <coughs> PAC chairperson at a semi annual stipend of fifty one dollars and fifty cents for a term to expire on twelve thirty one twelve. Planner appointment that Gino Santa Barbara be appointed as a town planner for a semi-annual salary of $4,653 for a term to expire on 12-31-12. Board Secretary, the Darla Galati is appointed, I'm sorry, Darla, obviously you spoke the name. Um, the Darla is appointed Secretary to the Planning and Zoning Boards at an hourly rate of $1,496 per, per hour for a term to expire on 12-31-12. Motion. <coughs> I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. <coughs> Opposed? Okay. So four ayes, one no. Um, so Edward, no. As a widow, Jasinski, Myers, and Joyce, yes. And for the record, Jasinski made the motion that he have a second. <clears throat> DCL appointment. Gonzalo Garada be appointed as a dog control officer at a rate of $17.13 per hour plus mileage for a term to expire at 12 31 12. Do I have a motion? Second. Wow. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. And aye. Five, five. And the motion was made by Mr. Esposito, seconded by Mr. Myers. Okay. Schenectady County Stormwater Management Liaison Appointment. Resolved by Jim Bosho, who's County Liaison for Stormwater Management at an hourly rate of $15.45 per hour for a term to expire on 12 31. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. <coughs> aye. And aye. Five eyes. Again, opened up uh, by Bob and seconded by Todd. Newsletter and deputy appointments. Do I have a motion that Pat Bishop be is appointed as a newsletter publisher at a rate of $15.45 per hour and Tim Bishop as distribution at an hourly rate of $14.96 per hour for a term to expire 12.31. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed. Five or four ayes and one no. The motion was made by Mr. Esposito and seconded by Mr. Mack. Joe. 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 Thank you, Mr. Um, <coughs> I wanted to touch base on the special committees again. Um, we did these mostly back in January. I did want to add one in there. Um, so this, we'll take a motion. Do I have a motion? We can assume all is the one. The new one. Uh, you can just make it for the new I propose that we form a uh, committee on computers, internet, and email policies. And in addition to that, I'll be the liaison if that's okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. All right, all in favor? Aye. aye. Bobby said aye? Yes, I did. I'm going to abstain. <coughs> All right, so we have four ayes and one abstain. The motion was made by Mr. Jasinski and seconded by Mr. Esposito. 
Um, and finally, uh, Supervisor Joyce appoints Norman Miller as Deputy Supervisor for a term to expire at 1231 at an amount of $902. Right, so that concludes that portion of the meeting, folks. It's at 7.35. Um, we'll now open the regular town board meeting. We'll start with uh, public comment. Again, uh, be conscious of people's time if you can. If there's no restrictions. My name is Timothy Ferrioli. I live at 2579 Ryan's Corners Road. Uh, some of these things I'm going to talk about, Mr. Iberi informed Mr. Joyce. I'll try to make this as brief as possible. But I would like to say that the town attorney should pay very close attention. First, I would like to say uh, thank you, Mr. Joyce, believe it or not. We're taking it slow when it comes to the solar power. Um, I read an email where he prevented the attorney from reading over a contract, saving us some money. He's taking it very slow, but I have one minor suggestion, because a lot of people didn't know about it, and neither did I. I think that the companies that uh, Mr. Trzynski talks to should come here, send their reps and at least 30 days notify the town so the town can come here and hear it right from the reps and answer and ask questions and it should only be just about solar power. Um, I, my knowledge of solar power is over six years old so I, I don't have anything to say about it but I would really like to talk to them and learn. So uh, that way no one shows up, then it's on us but I didn't realize about the organization. And uh, as far as the AEDs, and I emailed you, and I don't want to sound repetitive, but the defibrillators are a very good idea. They do save life. And the reason why you don't find them here in the businesses is because of litigation costs. And unfortunately, in this day and age, that's what we have to be concerned about, is how much uh, is a human life worth? Because the first person that takes that AED and uses it, and that person dies, their family is going to look to someone to blame. And who do you think that's going to be? The town, the person who uses it. And they will use techniques like who maintained it, who had the training for it. And you're going, how do I know this? I worked at surveillance in the casinos, MPM Grand, in the Mirage Corporation. And the steps that we took, this town cannot afford to take. We had three people on each shift that were certified in then what we called advanced or emergency uh, first aid, emergency first responder aid or something like that. Three people each shift. The AEDs were certified by uh, a maintenance person who went to school for the AED. Not only was it written, but it was also videotaped. So they couldn't say that you fraudulently, you know, marked on, you know, a maintenance thing. All that, because even though the casinos tried to save a life, someone wants, unfortunately, to sue. So before we buy one and spend that money, we should ask the town attorney what his input on it. We should ask the insurance company how much our insurance company, insurance is going to go out of it. But more importantly, this town should have a contract that states anybody who uses that AED will be covered by the town in any litigation or any loss of money due to any litigation or jobs. That's only fair. Because if they can't go after the casinos, you know, they'll go after them and they'll go after the people. Unfortunately, that's the time that we live in. And I have no problem with doing it if we protect the town employees. So I just want people to be aware of, and that's just, as a surveillance officer, that's just what we were told, and I'm sure the lawyers were more concerned about other angles than what we were told. So, now to some pleasantries. 
I'm going to make this as short as possible. I was going to sit here and, and read a pre-made speech, but I'm not, I'm not in the mood for it. But I will say this, I'm sorry that Ms. McLean is not here. Uh, to Mr. Edwards, uh, I apologize on behalf of the town for Joe Drusinski's childlike outburst in May. And since he obviously is not going to apologize for facts that you presented that he claimed was opinion because he apparently doesn't want to be educated on the town. So, on behalf of the town, I apologize. I know it doesn't mean much coming from me, but you're doing a good job. I can only say on your assessment, Tim Bishop has cost us much more so, than what you think. All due respect, so, Tim, if you just address the board and not individuals. I'm addressing the board. Well, let's keep the private citizens or staff. He's right not. It, it, this, I just, I'm addressing his issue. He was wrong on one thing. The person that he said did so much is much more the cost of the town, much more than I'm sorry if you have a problem with it. I don't think okay. so. Okay. Well, let's please the keep quiet and let me do my job so I can get out of here. Okay, let's keep it simple. Just All right, so now this goes to the attorney. And as a matter of fact, to, to heck with it. Tim Bishop wrote an email addressed to Mr. Uh, Joyce and every single one of those board members, including that smart guy over there who's laughing. Mr. Norm Miller, Mary Sue Reed, about how to make specifically make Carol McLean look like a fool and to wrest control from her. That is something that Mr. Joyce should have put a stop to, but he didn't. More emails. And the reason why I'm doing this is because everything that I'm going to read matches a hostile work environment. What the town, what the New York State calls uh, office mobbing and office bullying. And these were made and copied and sent to not only Carol McLean, but this town board, and not one of them had a had the backbone to stand up and put a stop on. They care more about themselves and wrecking Carol McLean, Ronnie, Mr. Edwards the judge, Rebecca Seeley, and anybody who they think stand in their way than they do about this town. Here's a good example of, a pri of an employee overreaching and demanding something he shouldn't even demand. Carol, please email, mail or email me a copy of this FOIL request so I might better determine what's being requested and by whom. Then he goes on to say, as Joyce, and uh, Pat Bishop, that they have no clue what, it, what constitutes a town, official town uh, document. So then there's threats by uh, Pat Bishop. There's uh, Tim Bishop saying that the town employees are stupid. My point is fairly straightforward. Are the town employees capable, capable and willing to take advantage of some of the advanced features offered by either of these printers. And there's much, much more, and I'm not going to bother reading them. You get the, you get the uh, gist of it. I'll put them up on my website, topny.org, every single one uncensored in PDF form. This that you've created is a hostile work environment. It's going to open this town up and you guys to civil lawsuits if you don't put a squash on it right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Any additional public comment? Well, actually, yeah. Whatever. Can 
copy on where it's captured drug, and I just have a, a statement, not really a problem, but I understand that there is going to be some changes in the personnel policy by resolution, and I would like to suggest that the town board really um, look at the whole employee manual, because not just taking certain items of the employee manual that um, are hereby um, making changes. Um, I think the whole manual needs to be revamped, and I hate to see that we would just pick certain things out the lunch period. I mean, we talked a little bit about this earlier today, and I just don't think that the people who work here have really, we only had an email and one day's notice to process it, to think about really what's best for the town to be open, whether or not to be open, what windows should remain open, and I think we just need a little bit more time. So I would hope that the <coughs> town board would maybe just table this for a little while, get some more responses from the people who are actually here during the lunch hour. We have a lot of residents who come in during the lunch hour. I have people who come from Brooklyn during the lunch hour. I'm not going to make them wait. If I'm here sitting here and have a sandwich, I'm going to go to my window or Rebecca's going to do the same. So, you know, to say we have to close our window is okay, but just kind of give us a little bit more time to process this and discuss it with uh, any of the town board members that have questions about it before you make a decision. Thank you. More comments? Mary Sue Reed, 962 Darrow. I wasn't planning on commenting tonight, but I feel like I'm being stabbed with a lot of darts. So. Um, I have no idea what Mr. Furioli is talking about. Trying to arrest, I'm sorry? That makes two of us. Trying to arrest Power from Carol McLean. I have no clue what this gentleman is talking about. And I don't like my name or other private citizens' names being smeared by this gentleman for no reason whatsoever. Um, now that I got that off my chest, um, we did bring up some good points, uh, Mr. Perioli, about the A and Ds, and I was wondering if the town board can check to see if there is possibly um, a good Samaritan law in the state of New York that would cover any individual that has uh, CPR training, because I know a lot of people do. Um, if they go to, to help somebody, uh, that they're protected from a lawsuit on that. And the other thing is possibly check with the state police barracks. They might already have AEDs right in the facility, and I know some of their vehicles have AEDs readily available. So perhaps <coughs> if we cannot have one here, at least the faculty, the staff will know where there's easy and quick access to one before EMTs are able to get here in case of an emergency. And that's it. Thank you. I was asked to read this, and I think, Mary, this might answer one of your questions. This is an email, and I'm, I was asked by Carol McClain to read this, so it's probably a good time now. It's from Tim Bishop to Mr. Joyce, Mr. Miller, Mr. Esposito, Pat Bishop, Mary Reed, and Mr. Duzinski. And it says, Mike, regarding the appropriate meeting notice time frame for public hearings that Carol challenged during last night's meeting, as, you can, as can be seen below, only five days is required for the public to have the notice of the new town law being reviewed so have her get the ethics law review notice in time for the next town board meeting. Again, it probably would be a good idea to have her copy you on the notification if you have not reviewed it for accuracy prior to submitting it to the Gazette. That way you can ask, ask her for it and then ask her for a list of all of the things she is doing when she is too busy to prepare the notice. Opportunities abound to her resistance is into a benefit, as you are responsible for how the town spends its money and extra town clerk, clerks money is spent are on the table for review. Additionally, whenever Carol comes comes up with this and BS, which is short for bullshit, um, you might ask her during the meeting to show in our town code or New York State town law where her 
ideas of comment are documented. Her opinions, in quotes, should not be heeded for a number of reasons, not the least of which is to wrest control from her. The other reason is to divulge that she is neither organized nor maintaining proper records. After all, you have expressed an interest in understanding how things are done at Town Hall, and Carol should be required to instruct us all in how records management officer has organized our information. So I'm going to have to help Additional comments. All right. Talk slowly. Do you have anything next or are you waiting? So minutes approval, we have a motion that the town board meets on the May 8th minutes be accepted or rejected if they stated. So I took a quick look through. Um, one big piece was missing. I think Mr. Uh, Edwards read a two-page statement into the record. Uh, I don't see it as part of the minutes. So we